Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Gonzo Ewok channel. Me Gonzo. Me Ewok. And truck her gently trucking for another episode of the podcast. The podcast. The podcast. Yes, the podcast. I got all excited. You I just excited. I missed doing the Jody Space program in so much. Soon, my friend, I soon Jody Space program will be back. Uh, so this is another podcast. We're going to talk about various topics. We don't have much in the way of topics planned, so we're just going to be winging it today. And today's background uh, viewing, for those of you who are watching the video alongside just listening to our sultry voices, is American Truck Simulator. Yeah, which check is, that shit out. Which is new. Out this week. Out this week. So that is, uh, I suppose, a good starting point for something to talk about. Why not? Uh, this is Gonzo's game. I've not got it myself. Um, I only recently got Euro Truck Simulator. I got Euro Truck Simulator two in the Christmas sale. So. Really? Oh, I thought you'd had it. Uh, thought you'd had it longer. No, I, I got it. Uh, I got it for Christmas. It was a Christmas Day game. Because I was uh, I was trucking along down the A one, delivering my stuff from Newcastle to Sheffield, listening to Christmas radio channel. Nice. Not just any Christmas radio. Dutch Christmas radio, <laughs> um, which yeah. is the same as British <laughs> Christmas radio, but with you know Dutch bits in between the songs. I'll um, I'll be honest. The um, American Truck Simulator. It's going to sound like one of the most um, straightforward, no shit Sherlock sentences you're ever going to hear. But if you enjoyed Euro Truck Simulator, you're going to enjoy American Truck Simulator. It, the I have to say the menus and everything were sat here and set the controller up. I'm guessing it didn't go completely well considering you're in here again. Um, the thing that I forgot, even when you tell it that you're using a controller or a joystick and it, you say I'm using a gamepad, yeah, it puts it across there. And the other thing is, I like to turn it up a little bit. Um, that should be okay there. Um, but the, these menus, everything, it looks very samey. It yeah. does. It looks. It looks much the same. Yeah. Um, is it a map pack, Gonzo? Is that what it is? Is that what it really is when you get down to it? Um, if I'm being cynical about you, the whole you situation, you're going the wrong way. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm turning not. around this way. Trust us. We're all right. I don't even know what I'm delivering here, but this is where we've got to go. Um, yeah, I think on the face of it, if you were going to be really. Um, if you were going to be really scathing and just give us kind of the quickest of kind of caption reviews, you would say, yeah, it's a map pack. Um, it's a very nice map pack because um, the graphics, I would say, are probably on a par, if not slightly better than the Scandinavian expansion that came out. So the Ooh, last, That feels close. The last big expansion that came out for um, Euro Truck Simulator. Um, but yeah, it actually... I think there's a bit more going on. One thing is, like, they seem to have captured that kind of, like, American feel perfectly. Um, it's a really... It feels really, really nice. Um, there's nothing better than putting on, like, a lot of the pre-tuned channels. You've got um, a lot of kind of country radio on there, and just sort of cruising around listening to some of it is just absolutely perfect. Um, I hit me parking brake there instead of cruise control. Um, yeah, so certainly in terms of the, the aesthetics are different, but the underlying gameplay is very, very similar. But they've made it feel American, if that makes sense. Just minor changes, it does feel different to uh, Euro Truck Simulator. Um, I'm in totally Ooh, the wrong Yeah, you are in the wrong way. Yeah, you're doing British driving, aren't you? You're on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, I'm still doing that a little bit. Even when I play Euro Truck Simulator, I still tend to um, get Drift confused. Drift on the left hand Yeah, side. when I'm not driving in Britain. We'll be alright with that. The other thing is, as well, I haven't changed. I've been playing on my own uh, personal playthrough here. I'm going to gun it, gun it. Um, I've been playing with kilometres an hour instead of miles an hour. So that's slightly thrown us when I'm checking my uh, little trip advisor here. Uh, where's, your, where's your speed limit notification? Um, you see it down on the, the bottom right, it's on your sat nav. Oh, okay. It's telling us that I should be doing 30, I'm currently doing 25. Where's the 30 bit? You're going to have to point for Bottom me. left of the uh, trip advice. Oh, yes, so I see. Good stuff. Um, Good stuff. One, I'm going one, to need that the, the, before, before when I have my right turn driving during the day. One thing that I have noticed is that the, um, the speeding fines are ridiculous. You'll get hit with a £1,000 fine if you're doing 32 miles an hour for more than five seconds in a town. That's something I think needs a bit of work. Um, I'd, well, I don't know. Maybe it's like <coughs> maybe speeding fines in America are ridiculously it's, high. It's not the fact that I'm being stung with a big bill. It's the fact that there's nothing that can see. is like, in Euro Truck Simulator, I would see. Um, yeah, you'd go past the speed cameras, the visible speed cameras on the roads. Yeah, and whereas here it's like there's not a cop in sight, I don't see any speed cameras that I know of, and yet I'm slapped with a fine um, on an empty road doing five miles over the speed limit for. A, and it's the fact that I do it for a few seconds. It's not as though I'm like driving at 100 miles an hour for like 20 miles up the road. Well, you just have to use your suspension of disbelief and pretend your truck's got some sort of. Uh, 
monitoring system in it, I don't know. I suppose so. How am I looking? I mean, oh, they're going to be pissed. Yeah, they are going to be furious. You just block that entire lane. Um, yeah, I suppose um, it was a nice thing about the, the Euro Truck Simulator that you could basically get away with speed as long as you knew where your speed mm. cameras were and where they were coming up. Um, yeah, so that that's quite annoying. The other thing is as well, and it's something that's been said before, I'm sure a lot of reviews have picked up on it, um, the maps, while the starting maps you get to California, there, there's a red signal. I didn't even see that coming. I'm used to British roads. Um, but the, the maps the maps look really good. You get two states, you get California and you get Nevada. They're both a decent size. There's some lovely places to drive. It feels really nice. Um, but in the same breath, it's it's quite small. Like when your truck simulator came out and you got the whole of Europe. True, you didn't get Eastern Europe and you didn't get um, sort of Northern Europe in terms of like Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. But that map still felt really big. And this map doesn't. And feel I've, as I've big. only got the the basic Euro Truck Simulator too. I don't have any of the expansion packs, and it feels big enough. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting a few negatives out of it. Uh, the main positive that I'm getting it is it, it's the same yeah. good gameplay. Yeah, which, it's, which, it's which all I the really fun you got from that. Yeah, people people this. watching this probably don't get it, and I spent I spent a long time not getting why it could be. Fun it's to so play relaxing. a game like this. Um, Naz was online on Twitter last night. Naz is um, a guy who sometimes watches our channel and sometimes watch uh, watch his, but I talk to him quite a bit on Twitter. He's another northeast based um, YouTuber, and he was up last night. And he was saying, "I really want something to play and relax." And instantly, I went for um, if you've got Euro Truck Simulator or American Truck Simulator, bang one of them on. It's like the gaming equivalent of Holix. It's just so mm -hmm. sort of like Zen. You can just properly kind of like pass out to it. You've got to pull in way the way stations. Now this is a new thing which I've never done before. Um, stop at a scale. Can't fit the icon. All right, fair enough. I think you've kind of overshot it a little bit. Yeah, I hit um, accelerate instead of brake. Hopefully. So brass tax then. How much did it cost you? Now this is the other positive for me. I mean that's it. That's yeah. That's your way station. That's a feature, apparently. But no doubt, if you would, if you went past it, you would have got fined. Yeah, um, I think the other sort of big positive is I like the way it feels. It does everything that your truck simulator did well, um, which I really like. Um, the other thing is it's fifteen quid. Okay, so that's fair enough. I'm more tempted by it knowing that it's fifteen quid. Yeah, um, if I'd paid, even if I'd paid a few quid more, if I'd paid like nineteen ninety nine for it, I'd be feeling like it's a bit thin on the ground. I'd want a bigger map. I'd expect things to be fleshed out, but I know what the developers are doing. They've brought the game out, they want to get people into it and playing it, and then they'll release more customization for your trucks, as they do with Euro Truck Simulator. The map, even as it stands at the minute, looking at the west coast, there's already on the map, if you zoom out, um, about another eight states worth that they've got kind of plotted down on the map, even right. without roads. So it's like, well, even if they only expand and do on the west coast, the map could end up very big. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely I'm enjoying playing it, really enjoying it. And the price, I think, yeah, you'll probably get stung with DLC, but you kind of expect that nowadays. But if it's DLC that adds substantive content to the game, um, and they don't take the piss and rip your eyes out with it, I'm totally for that. You know, like, I want more of this, basically. I wish it had a bit more to start with, but I'll not hold it against it too bad. For 15 quid, I reckon I could enjoy this. I'm looking at the scenery and it's, it's, it's really very good. Yeah. And obviously, um, when, you, when you're viewing it on YouTube, you'll be viewing it in a, a downscale 720. Yeah. Uh, simply for reasons of file size and the fact that, you know, not everyone who watches these kind of videos has super fast broadband, so streaming in 1080p can be a little bit strenuous. Uh, so we record in 720, but we play in 1080, and if it's not coming through, it's a very pretty game. Yeah, uh, we, 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 we had a load of hassle last time we reported the podcast and we recorded it at Euro Truck Simulator because Euro Truck Simulator is good looking as well, and the the file size was was about astronomical. Four gig, I think, for <laughs> an hour long podcast. I think it was about six gig. Um, it it took some time to get sorted, and then of course I've got the to recompile and and uh, compress the video into a different format before I upload it onto YouTube. Uh, and it is compressed video we're recording, by the way. Uh, if it was, if we're recording un footage, uncompressed with, uh, with fraps, uh, it would probably fill a hard drive up in uh, yeah, <laughs> fill a one terabyte hard drive up in about thirty minutes. Um, 
so yeah, so ultimately, you know what, for the price, I'm quite happy to wait until some DLC comes along. If you've got Euro Truck Simulator and you really enjoy it, yeah, it will make sense. You've probably already picked this up though, so what's the point in talking about it, frankly? However... Oh, you say, you say that when we're if, this far in. If you're on the fence though, um, if maybe you haven't got Euro Truck Simulator, um, yeah, it's a good as place as any to start, ultimately. It's good fun. The other thing though, I think it comes down to the aesthetic. It looks and feels very American. And that's going to appeal to people that like that kind of Americana mm. kind of culture, really, you know? It does look really good. And of course... And if you like driving, it's it's such a fun game. It is. To just chill do, if you like. Just two a nice things, meander and just drive down a straight road for hundreds of miles. Two things that make it. One, putting on local radio, which obviously we can't do because then we're kicked off YouTube. Two, there's tumbleweeds. The best thing that I've seen so far, I've only got about three, four hours into it so far. Um, I was driving outside of Reno in the desert, sun was going down, had some country music on, and then I saw about 15 tumbleweeds just rocking their way across the highway. They made us think, that's America. Tumble along Lovely. with the tumbling tumbleweeds. Exactly. One new thing when you pull up to your delivery venue. You've got a, a made challenge, brand option. Challenge for more, um, for more XP. These... I haven't been able to do one yet, and I'm alright with Euro Truck Simulator when I'm sitting playing it by myself and just relaxing. These ones, laughably simple, but it gets you a little bit more XP, or you can just skip it all together. But we'll, go for, we'll go for the laughably simple one. Um, oh, no, sorry, I have managed to park one of the difficult ones, but I did about 15-20% damage to me, uh, me cargo. So um, it probably wasn't worth it yeah, in the end. Yeah, um, I got a little bit more XP, but I ramped up, uh, you know, or lost a lot of the, the funding that I would have got. Right, do we'll hop out. Check how we're doing. Ah, uh, I'd say it's probably close enough to get the bonus. No, it needs to turn green. I need to straighten it up a touch. I know I appreciate the uninitiated. <laughs> this looks so fucking boring, but it's really, really good fun. It's really difficult. Yeah, driving. That, that trailer never goes the way you want it to. <laughs> Skip it, skip it. I'm not skipping it. it. No, fuck it. I'm skip doing it, it properly. Skip I'm it. doing it properly. We're, we're supposed to be doing a podcast here, not a, not a reversing a truck simulator. Well, you say something and while I'm reversing, then we'll what talk. What can I say? You, you, look, it, you just, it's getting worse. Because you're putting us under pressure instead of talking you, about you, podcasting you things. Your car. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a you fuck. You your truck. Oh, it, it's all over the shop now. So, in other news, um, today is February the 5th. And that means it is XCOM 2 day. It is now. I've been at work all day, but you got finished a little bit earlier. I got finished at one o'clock, so I've had a couple of uh, a couple of hours to chill. Fuck it. Yes. <laughs> Carry on. Go on, swap a seat. Let me have the comfy trucker seat. Tell me more about XCOM 2, though. I know it's been um, very well anticipated. People are well up for it. Well, first of all, I'd say it was uh, it was a very warm buttocks. Of course, I do. Uh, but when I say that, I mean, <laughs> I mean the seat that I've just sat in we have swapped, is very warm. We have swapped seats and he also goosed us. Um, um, yeah, uh, that was bought to me by a very good friend as a Christmas present. I think it was a right twat, the one that bought you that. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've had, it on, I've had it on pre-order since Christmas, but it's a gift. I'm, I'm actually wearing my next club t-shirt today. Oh, so you are. Um, an Enemy Within t-shirt. And... I've played the tutorial mission, uh -huh. which was, you know, a tutorial mission. I assume the tutorial mission for XCOM 2 is very similar to the first one, in terms of, yeah, take and move your guys, uh, this is what action points you're, are. You're almost on rails with it. Aye. A little scripted bit that introduce you to the themes and, yeah. Cool, okay. So, what happens after that? Um, then you do a little bit of an intro to your base, uh, which if anyone hasn't seen, um, no, no, no huge spoilers in this, by the way. Little bit about the opening hour of the game, but no huge spoilers. Yeah, I've, I've got the game downloading as we speak, so I don't want spoilers either. I'm looking forward to playing it this weekend. Uh, engine on. Gear. Yeah, there we go. Um, so You're going the wrong way. Ah. You, you mocked me for going the wrong way, and this is what you've done. Tell me more about XCOM while you try and unfuck your truck. <laughs> So then I went on to the second mission. Ah. Uh -huh. um, I'm playing on normal difficulty. Um, I'm not ready for anything more than normal difficulty. Played the second mission. It's f 
fucking rock solid. It's it's really difficult. I got it done by the skin of my teeth without getting anyone killed. Now, do you think that maybe it's been designed that way on purpose? Because, again, without going into kind of the details of XCOM 2 and Spawn for people that have maybe avoided the hype train, um, do you think they're setting you up the same as you got in XCOM 1 to be kind of like your back's up against the wall here, sort of, this is desperate times. I think, I you think are, they're you are the weaker, you know, you're the weaker opponent in this match. I think they very much are, but... I mean, way, 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 way harder than the first XCOM did. In really? The, I genuinely thought, and it was only luck that saved me, that I was going to lose that first mission. And it throws stuff against you that you wouldn't expect to see in the first... Uh, I say the first mission, I'm calling it the first mission. The first, the first mission, the first, that's a tutorial. The first proper mission. And it, it threw stuff against me that I really wasn't expecting it to. I thought it was going to be basic stuff, with you know the bog standard uh, enemies, um, it's going to be you know, a little piece of cake to get me walking in the game. And... Everyone could have died. I ended up sort of like running away and hiding behind cover a lot of it and hoping they would come towards me and firing pot shots and then running away a bit more. Uh, am I allowed to go here? Uh, I think in America you can do a right turn on a red light, can't you? But it, lo it looked safe, yeah. Yeah, it seems to have let you. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into it. Um, I haven't had a chance yet because it's a 24 gigabyte download and I've got shit broadband. I set it away downloading 7.30 this morning before I left for work. What's um, the fast lane, by the way? Um, always the one closest to oncoming traffic. So you're in the slow lane. Cool. Um, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to getting it. Hopefully by tonight it'll be downloaded and I might be able to play some tomorrow. And uh, There's a, a big graphical improvement over the original XCOM. Uh, the original one was a good looking game, mind, even for 2012 release, 2013 a, When they move ahead, the hair waves around, uh, there's a lot more in terms of customisation options. You're meant to be doing 30, you're doing 70. I don't know how you haven't been slapped with a fine here, because I would have been. <laughs> I thought everyone was going a bit slow. It's still a red light. Um, okay, then, so I mean, in terms of XCOM, it's really hot because it's just brand new, right? But what are your sort of first impressions of it, apart from the second mission, yep. or the first proper mission being hard? Very, early, early to say, possibly. Very, but. very early to say. Um, I'm really impressed with the customization options. I've already fallen in love with a couple of my troops. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a British guy called William Hill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> William Hill, we should point out for is, people who aren't in the way, is a is a brand of bookmakers um, and gambling dens around uh, around Britain. Um, they've got whoa a variety of British and American accents, and I think they've got uh, different Spanish accents as well. Right for troops, uh -huh. uh, hopefully some more regional accents to come. Uh, so your your troops feel a lot more like you know people rather than just the identical kind of clones. Yeah. Aye, aye, and um, that's good. One of the things that I really really enjoyed in the um, the first XCOM or the you know en Enemy Unknown, as it was the uh, the the reboot of the series, was some of that character um, customization. I'd always deck my men out according to class um, how they would look. So my heavies always wore helmets. Um, all my sort of fighting troops, so my assaults, my soldiers, um, and my heavies would wear. Um, I yeah, can't get into gear. There we yeah, go. Um, would wear um, sort of olive drab. They would wear military uniforms. Yeah, but, I had all my medics in white. Yeah, my support class. I did exactly the same. My support classes would usually be in white um, to sort of differentiate them on the battlefield. Um, but yeah, and I liked that. I liked being able to kind of give them sort of a different look, and I would change that look depending on what they'd achieved as well playing through the game. You well, know? you've got far more. You've got overlapping colour palettes um, rather than just a single colour palette. You can put uh, colour patterns on their weapons. You can give them accessories like glasses, sunglasses, bandanas, things like that. Uh, this is just what I've looked at. I haven't actually customised any of my troops yet because I'm liking the ones that I came with. Oops. Um, you can write them bios. Nice. So you can write a bio for each of your guys. You can rename them. You can change their nickname. You, so what, you, you can change all their individual body parts. So what we've established then, without knowing how good the game is yet, because it's early days, it's a really good soldier dressing up sim game. <laughs> that sounds really good. And don't get us wrong, that, that sounds as though I'm being derogatory. I would really enjoy that. I could spend a long time playing that. It gives you the opportunity to... 
it really, really tells stories, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, so you could write a bio, and can you yeah. revisit that bio, and you could include things that they've done during the, the campaign, during the missions? Absolutely. Um, you, you could like even do things like, if they get wounded, you could go in and give them scars. Nice, cool. Now, I like that because what I used to do was all my rookies, when I first got them, as I said, everybody went into all of drab and they all got like a basic combat helmet. I'm not doing very well here. You're doing terrible. And this is another thing that's worth pointing out with your American Truck Simulator. You get stuck on stuff a lot, way more than you did in Euro Truck Simulator. That, that corner was far too narrow for a truck to be able to take. Well, yeah, yeah, trailers and this, there's a lot more trailer designs and they're much bigger. But getting back to XCOM anyway, point in hand. Um, yeah, I used to give all my rookies basic combat helmets and once they'd graduated beyond squaddy level and they'd actually started sort of like forming a specialism, then it's like, right, you can take the helmet off. It's kind of like the kind of the sort of the Vietnam trooper syndrome. It's like, well, if we're going to die, we're going to die anyway. I'm not going to fight on wearing a helmet. You know, like, I'm getting me dreadlocks out. I'm getting, like, me warhawk on. Or... I would be much the same. Everyone would start with, like, the standard XCOM equipment and then as they got promoted, I would give them a little bit more customization. Yeah, just give them, flesh them out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this as well. You know, give them some sunglasses, give them some cool haircuts and some bandanas. And oh, yeah, I like the idea of putting their scars on. Yeah, the scars, the face, camo, stuff like that. Uh, um, there's extra, well, there's extra classes, uh, double the amount of classes really by the looks of it. It looks as though you start off and you get assigned a class when you get your first promotion that you did, so... Um, no, I think, have you turned your engine off? Um, yeah. <laughs> I meant to press cruise control. Yeah, we use slightly different controller setups for uh, trucks and that. So, you... What was I saying? You were talking about um, the um, customization and then the classes that you get. The classes, yeah. So, you start off, um, you get promoted to a class. So, I've got a guy who's just been promoted to Grenadier, which is the equivalent of the heavy. Um, but then it goes down two split branching paths when they get their next promotion. Right. So, let's imagine your sniper, which is the gunslinger, and this, you seem to have two split branching paths. I haven't got anyone at that level yet, but one seems to focus on becoming a pistolier and the other seems to focus on becoming a long range support troop. Right, cool. Um, you've got the guy who's got the little drone, one path seems to make him a sort of hacking expert and debuffing expert and the other path seems to make him a buffing medical expert. Right, cool. Okay, then I quite like that. So actually there is reason because one of the things that I found with the original one was if I've got five support troopers, mm -hmm. yeah there is different skills that I can equip them with. But one generally, was generally better than the other, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, there was like a clear choice of this is what I need. Really. So it was a choice between gunslinger and... Uh, the one where you can shoot in squad sight. Uh, yeah. You'd always go with squad sight because yeah. it was it was way way better as a as a skill. Yeah, but actually, if they've made it so, say the gunslinging kind of traits actually do have like a valuable gameplay like some mm. sort of impact. It would make sense to have two of them and decide which one you're going to take on which mission and for which reason. One of the things that I am really 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 looking forward to. I don't have you followed much of the XCOM hype train? I've, no, I've tried. Well, I tend to avoid hype trains in general. I've seen little snippets that have came out. I've heard a few people kind of discussing it, various podcasts I listen to. But I've, I've avoided most of the hype train, but over the last couple of weeks I've read a couple of articles, uh, a couple of magazine articles, a couple of internet articles, and I've read them talking about why they made it a PC exclusive. And the decision to make it a PC exclusive was because they want mod support. Yeah, this is something I've even seen um, in the, there's a, an update out today, they're talking about even like the config files are all open, so you can jump mm. in and mess around with them if you want from day one. Now, Enemy Unknown, of course, uh, with it being released on the consoles, uh, with it being fairly closed off, it was very, very difficult to mod. Yeah, with the exception of, um, on the PC, oh fuck, no, on the PC we've got the, um, we've got the Long War. We've got the Long War mod, that's, that's exactly where I'm coming to, mate. Uh, so, the game's been uh, released alongside some pretty impressive modern tools. Uh -huh. And in order to show off the modern tools, uh, the uh, 2K and Firaxis brought in Long War Studios. Nice. To make three release day mods that are available in the Steam Workshop. Sweet. So there's three mods available. One's a submachine gun. Uh, which is uh, a weapon designed to kind of bridge the gap between the shotgun and the, the, the assault, assault rifle. Yeah. It's a mid-range weapon, and by using it, your troops get a little bit more movement allowance. Cool. 
Uh, they've introduced a new enemy, uh, which I think was a, mut a mutant centurion, I think they called it, which is almost going to act like a bit of a mini-boss. Right. And I can't for the life of me, now that we're recording, remember what the third one is. But it's just to prove like the power of the modern tools at the very beginning. And That's pretty cool. XCOM, it had the Long War mod, it had some very basic kind of customization mods and tweak mods, but because it wasn't very moddable, no one apart from Long War Studios managed to come out with anything that I thought was really particularly yeah, meaty. Like sub substantial, yeah. And, you know, we're day one here, and I'm already talking about how I'm like salivating at the idea that this game is going to be supported by modders for years and years right. and years. Now, I mean, one thing that jumps out with me, and what one thing that I will kind of quantify this with is, it's great to be able to talk about the release of a big game and say there's day one mods rather than he has cut content in the form of day one DLC. Uh, you know, I, I think know there is, a, there is a 16 quid season pack that I've seen that's coming out, which is giving you access to three um, sort of mini expansions that are coming out over the course of this next year. But the season packs are, are sort of par for the course these they days, are, aren't they? Still, Everyone still doesn't, it still isn't something that sits comfortably with us. But, but it's basically the opportunity to say, we're going to bring, bring it out to the LC, it's going to be 10 quid a pop, or you can buy the whole lot now for 20 quid and you'll get it as it comes out. Uh, I, I don't generally buy them. I didn't buy the Fallout one. I'll get them as they come out. Um, I'd rather... You spend know, a bit more and pay it over a long time. The thing is, usually with these, you usually see, you know, if there's, say, three of them, you can guarantee at least one of them will be, like, kind of must-have really good. There'll be one that's pretty good. There's probably going to be one that's considered a bit of a weak link. They might, you know, that might be wrong, but generally when these things happen, even thinking back to, like, um, Fallout 3, thinking back to New Vegas, there's yeah, some, point, some of them come out. And point Lug Out was the standout of Fallout 3, but then you had Operation Anchorage, which was all right, but probably wasn't worth the initial asking price. Yeah, so you always get that kind of, sort of a mixed bag. And don't get us wrong, you know what, if you're enjoying the game, if I play it a bit over the next uh, you know few days and I'm really enjoying it, if I'm feeling flush, I might drop the cash on it. I do like the fact, though, that it's not like, here's content that is available now, straight away from day one, that could have been in the game, and you have to pay for it. This is stuff yeah. that chances are they're going to now spend the next few months working on. I may be wrong, but I think day. the only thing that was included if you pre-ordered was uh, the soundtrack. Aye. Aye, I don't think there was anything exciting that like you got an advantage. I don't think there was even sort of like incentives in terms of new weapons or customizable um, items or classes or anything like that. At least I don't think so. No, there might not, be. No, Who if we are, yeah. Oh, yeah, must be right turn off. <laughs> oh, groan. I don't, um, I don't know if you can just. So, you know, I'm, I'm not at the point now where I t t confidently turn around and say this is a great game, but what I've seen in the very short time that I've played it, I'm really looking forward to getting back to it tonight and just popping a few hours in it. So, it's making a good first impression then overall, eh? Brilliant first impression, excellent first impression. Let's hope it uh, keeps it up. Yeah, speeding again. We, we now, as a result of your actions, we now owe eight hundred and fifty pounds on on the job. Or yeah, yeah. As in, I've got no way of making we, back. We had fifteen hundred quid when we started. We're now at minus eight hundred and fifty nine. It's your fault for changing the buttons around. Let's see, look, I've got the what, what's the parking brake button. Um. So, they were the only two topics that were kind of picked up on initially that we wanted to talk about. But I think there's one other thing that we kind of touched on just because of. It's something that you've been playing, I played a fair bit of it. You played um, a bit of it, then then dropped out. Um, I played Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. Uh, I completed Dragon's Dogma uh, my first playthrough yesterday. Nice. Now, Dragon's Dogma, it's a strange one. I played it back, I'm going to say back in the day, but back in the days of PS3, when I came out on PS3, I was playing it then. Yeah, I bought it on PS3, um, then got shot of it after not getting very far into the game at all, and then I got it on PlayStation Plus mm -hmm. and then I got about the same distance into it and then decided I wasn't going to play it anymore and then it came out on PC ah break ah fuck it's better I'll just keep going and then I got it on PC and I just got totally addicted to it and couldn't put it down um, nice. and, and went all the way through it. people you never used to see people yeah there's, there is there's people. people you see people cleaning stuff and milling around so yeah really really good game and uh, what was refreshing was it was a pretty good port of PC really there good wasn't, there wasn't any massive issues it kind of came out of nowhere didn't it I just it popped up on Steam a couple of months before releasing Dragon's Dog by Dark Arisen and I thought 
hasn't that been on for a couple of years now? Yeah, it's, it's an old, it's a previous generation console game. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly in terms of the port, I think the things that people tend to look out for is one, performance. Um, they tend to look out for how much you've got by way of being able to customise graphic options and controls. Mm-hmm. Um, and I suppose generally just kind of how it's been sort of tailored or adapted to kind of suit the PC market, you know. Um, and I mean, we can probably all think of some examples of games that have been ported to PC um, that have been done absolutely. Well, Batman Arkham well. Knight. Perfect example. Sort of keeping it fairly. Uh, fairly oh, that was a release date port. Um, Dark Souls had a few teething problems. Dark Souls, the I've got it on uh, Steam. I got it to play on uh, the um, the PC because uh, I couldn't uh, miss the boat on the consoles with it, and the controls were just I just couldn't get my head it, around. It has to be played with a controller. It uh, has to. Um, I think it was also capped at thirty frames per second on yeah. the. Uh, it's a common thing that you see amongst dodgy ports as well. Um, so yeah, I suppose those are the things that people would tend to look out for. And don't get us wrong, it's not like it can just be as cut and dry to say, if it has these things it's good and if it doesn't it's bad. But one thing that we can say definitely is that Dragon's Dogma allows you to do all of those things. It introduced shortcut keys, so it, yeah. it wasn't just a plain they like, pull it over, there was some thought put into it. Exactly. It came over with all the DLC packs that had been uh, yeah, released, it, it through released the consoles. Through, throughout the length of the console's lifespan. Um, yeah, and ultimately it's like it was more than just paying lip service. It's like this has been done capably and it's been done with, I don't want to say respect because it makes it sound so grandiose, but that idea that it's been done with sensitivity, it's been done very much with what PC it's just been gamers are going to well. look for when, when something comes. Yeah, it was very, very well done. And it was very good, uh, good fun to play around with. Personally, believe it or not, I've uh, played it to the part where I got to when I was playing it on the, uh, on the consoles and then I put it down. <laughs> But, you know what, it's one of those games I was really enjoying my time with it. It's just, stuff happened at work, I got really busy, other stuff was going on, and I thought, I will come back to this at some point, but not quite there yet. Did I make a loss on that, then? How much uh, did I get? Swap seats? So, yes, yes you did. No, well, it was it was a really good game. I uh, I had your pawn around for a while. If nobody knows the, the plot of the game, it's an, it's an action RPG. And you're a guy. You've got to kill a dragon. Blah 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 blah. But you get a you get you get two characters really. You get your main character, the guy that you control, and you get make a pawn, which is a kind of human-like being from another dimension. Uh, and you, you, your pawn, he comes with you, follows you around. You can level him up. You can set what his skills are, what his character class is, etc., etc. And then that kind of connects to the online functionality of the game, where you can hire other people's pawns to join your party of adventurers. You can have up to four people in it. So I had Gonzo's pawn tagging along with me. I had a little dwarf warrior kind of guy. That you was had your, a, your pawn. That yeah. was my pawn. You had a, a kind of Scandinavian priestess kind of character. That's how I saw her in the way yeah. that you had her decked out. Who was a who was a mage with healing magic and some some buffing magic. And your your pawn gets hired out by other people. Uh, if they like you, they, they can rate you. They can send you gifts back along with your pawn, and you get currency that you can spend in the game. And it's, it's quite a nice little mechanism. Yeah. Um, I At the end of the game, it showed me some of the pawns that I'd hired for the longest time and the most frequently. As oh, well, sort of like nice, memories nice in touch. the corners of your mind. Um, I played when I was on the PS3. Um, my pawn was kind of like a big badass kind of tribal looking fella. Mm. Um, with sort of dreadlocks and tattoos, and he did um, did very well. Um, he got hired out by a lot of people because I, I had it on day one, a game that I never really came across. But I was, I think, in one of the local game shops the day it came out. I kind of took a look and thought, oh, you know what? It's kind of like Dark Souls Light, so I'll try that. Turns out that's not really a particularly apt analogy, but I picked the game up and started playing around with it. Enjoyed it, and my pawn was quite popular. A lot of people rented the pawn out, were using it, well, sending it back with gifts and good feedback. Um, and it is, it's a nice little feeling, you know. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of getting back into the game and playing it, um, it's probably I, I unlikely now that XCOM 2 has come out. Exactly, it's one of those ones, unfortunately. So I called Dishonored Syndrome. Dishonored and XCOM came out at the same time when those two games launched. Um, and I played Dishonored, but at the same time, I can remember playing it. I'd get one frustrating part of a, a level. Then and I was you've got XCOM. XCOM for a bit. Yeah, back in the days where, you know, younger, carefree, still in my 20s, 
you'd look back and uh, kind of look across to XCOM and think, oh, I'll just I'll load XCOM up, and then it was like three in the morning, four in the morning, and I'd been playing that the whole time, um, and loved it, and kind of never went back to this on it. I did end up finishing it, but um, it was more just like. I suppose just kind of routine more than anything else. I just get I, through. I enjoyed this on but I'm 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 the, in the same boat as you with that. I did feel it was overshadowed by X, uh, XCOM, probably just because XCOM to me is is closer to my preferred genre. Um, back when I was still doing a, a bit of games writing, I did a I did an article with. Uh, and one of my colleagues about XCOM versus Dishonored, where we were arguing the case for which one was going to be the game of the year, and I argued for for XCOM naturally. Um, it, you know, you know, it was really nice to see XCOM on the Steam number one um, sales for a while. Aye, because you know it's a, a turn-based strategy. It's not a popular genre. I kind of felt that maybe. The audience has outgrown it a little bit. I know a lot of people who used to play games when they were kids have kind of tailed off from playing games now. Um, so it was. It, I didn't. I wasn't sure if the love for the the franchise was still there. So I'm. I'm really. I was really pleased to see it do well, and certainly now that we've got a sequel out of it. I really had my doubts that it would do well. If I'm uh, very honest, um, when the reboot was announced, I was um, skeptical because I was such a fan of the original XCOM when it came out. Um, when when I heard about game. it, I was at Gamescom, and I heard about it, and then I was like, "Oh, would you would you like an appointment? Would you like to come and come and see it?" Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. I remember you telling us when you'd been to see it and saying, "Oh, it's really good," and I was like, "Ah, but they've done away with action points, and you know, oh, why couldn't they keep it sort of like isometric and this, that, the other?" And it was like, "Yeah, it's, That's, it's definitely been cut back from its, uh, its, its the original layers of fun. complexity that were in it, but." I don't think it, I don't think it came out negative as a result of it. I think it's it's a lot easier to manage, but it's still hardcore. It's hardcore in terms of you know it's got real consequences. It's got difficulty. It's got it's, it's got that connection that you get with your your squaddies, perhaps more so than the original XCOM when they literally were all the same looking. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't have that layer of depth where I would think on a night time, oh. I can't be bothered to play that. I'm too tired. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna play something a bit more generic. I mean, I get like I get like that a lot with with particularly deep and complex games. They're great, but you have to. You yeah, CK two is really, something the most people yeah. just casually turn on and say, "I'll just spend an hour managing a medieval dynasty." Absolutely, yeah. But that, uh, uh, there we go. I think I think I kind of vaguely skirted around the point that I was trying to make if indeed there was a point at all I don't know There's I'm just hypnotised by the 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 wonderful oh, lovely cars lovely, no not the cars the, the lovely mountains and the the sort of scrubland and uh, it's just it's just very relaxing I've got a horn you you've got a horn get air you've got a horn we were that excited about what I'm, we were talking I'm about I'm frothing Anything else to talk about, mate? I mean, we've got one more thing. Um, I can't think of anything. They were the ones that we came up with before we sat down and said, let's do a podcast today. Let's do a podcast. Um, I, th- I suppose the one thing that I've got to talk about is that I've got a subscription at the Humble Monthly Bundle now. Oh, I, you, you've mentioned this in the Which um, really, really, really looks good. Um, I looked at last month's games that came out. Basically, how it works is you pay a monthly fee and you get like a selection of Steam codes at the end of the month. They go, oh, here's some games. Um, you get one big game. Uh, last month it was the Talos Principle. This month it nice. was... I've been after playing that for a while. I'm never getting Me too, it. and I missed it by a day. Um, this month it's Alien Isolation. Cool. Got it. But... Um, and then like, a, a huge selection of, of indie games. And I looked at the, the bundle for, for January, and you know it looked really awesome. And it's only just started, and I thought if they can keep up with this kind of quality, I'll happily throw the kind of money that they're asking on it. Mm. Um, but you know, as a result, I've now got a Steam key for Aliens Colonial Marines that I can't use. <laughs> and um, Colonial Marines is it? Not Colonial Marines, uh, Alien Isolation. I was going to say, if it was Colonial, like, uh, if it was Colonial Marines, that, it. I know it's not it's exactly, digital, a, not exactly a selling point. Right. Uh, so I've got. Uh, Alien Isolation, and I'm probably going to have a whole bunch of other games that come in uh, in this month that I already own because I've got ridiculous amounts of games. It's all I ever spend money on. 
So I thought that I might give them away to some of our, our lovely viewers. Oh, how nice is that? Um, so if, if you'd like uh, some game codes, I don't know what they'll be yet. I'll probably post in the comments to say what my spare codes are. I've definitely got Alien Isolation and I'm almost positive I'm going to have a few more. So if you'd like one, why don't you just... I don't know, chime up in the comments or send us a message on Facebook at gonzoewalk.com forward slash Facebook and I might throw a code your way if I like the message that you send us. Ask us some questions. Send us some questions. There we go. Send us some questions that you would like the, the Gonzo Ewok response to and then our next podcast we will uh, answer some of the questions that, that people ask us in... The comments on YouTube or that they send us through Facebook That's or, a really or, good or idea. Twitter or anything like that. And anyone who sends us a question, I'll I'll enter you into a, a draw to win one of these game codes and I'll use a random number generator to pick the results from the people who ask questions. There we go. There's a plan. Came up with that on the fly. That sounds really good. And you know what? That wasn't pre-planned either. So that's youtube.com forward slash gonzo ewok. Facebook.com forward slash Gonzo Ewok or at Gonzo Ewok on Facebook. Any of those methods, you can get us a message. Um, ask us a question and we'll collate those questions together. We'll address them in the next podcast and at the same time we'll announce who's the winner and I'll get in touch with you either on Facebook or on YouTube. Nice. Or on Twitter. One of, one of the three. Yeah, that's a, a very nice thing you've done there. Free games you? and I'll let you know how I, uh, how I rate this month's bundle as well. I just um, crashed the truck because I looked at you with a nice crashed, smile. It's a very truck. nice thing you just done. Well, what am I going to do with them? The, the, the codes that I've got, so you know, I might as well give them away to people. Cool. Okay, then, well, we've got nothing else to talk about, really. So, on that note, listening. thank you very much for listening to this uh, unplanned, and I think it came across as unplanned podcast. Shoddy. <laughs> shoddy is <laughs> this, the word. This, this shoddy and scatty podcast, and uh, we will see you when you look at another video or something. Cheers. Great outro! Bye. Bye. Cheers for tuning in to the podcast. If you'd like to watch some of our other series, you can click on the left for Geordie Space Program. And you can click on the right for some Prison Architect. And you can also press that subscribe button. Thanks for listening. Bye.